Hi, I'm Brittany, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to organize a connected Christmas by Treehouse Schoolhouse. This is a three-week Advent study that your family can do all together, and I'll be showing you how to gather books, how to organize those books, how to display them around your schoolroom, as well as how to print, prepare any of the printed resources, the craft materials, and the ingredients you need for recipes. If you're watching this before you've even purchased the curriculum, you'll also see that you have the option to buy it pre-printed. Because I have multiple children, I chose the PDF option, but either option could work for your family. The first thing you're going to want to do when you download your file is take a look at the parent guide and the student sheets and then determine how many of the student sheets you are going to need printed. Having multiple children myself, I like to make sure that I have a copy printed for each child so it's in front of them during our learning time. You might wish to do the same. And then for the parent guide, if you're okay looking at it through your um, laptop or an iPad, you might not want to print it, but I will show you how it looks printed spiral bound as well. If you do not have a printer or choose to have the images professionally printed, I highly recommend using Staples. This is where I get the bulk of my resources printed on high quality paper, and it's also a laser jet, so the illustrations look even more beautiful. But you could also use various other printing companies as well. The first thing you want to have printed is the teacher guide. As you can see, Staples does a nice spiral binding, and they also put a clear cover on the front and cardstock on the back. I recommend printing this in color because as you'll see, there are beautiful illustrations and demonstrations of the crafts and recipes in here. And I also recommend printing this double-sided just to save on paper. Now you'll only need one copy of the teacher guide printed, but I do recommend printing additional pages of both the material and the book list. Let me show you why. The reason I suggest putting an additional copy of the material list in the book list that's outside of your parent guide is so that year by year you can go over and check off or highlight the materials that you already have. You can do this on a weekly basis because the list is broken up by week and go through your home to collect any art supplies from your cabinets or any recipe items you would need as well. For the book list specifically, you might wish to notate or coordinate by color which books you would like to borrow, which you already have, or which you would need to purchase. You can also utilize this blue sleeve to budget out, maybe set a weekly budget or write the price of the books if you wish to purchase them next to. The parent guide also has them linked. So if you're looking at your digital file, you can click the link. It will take you to a video format of the books as well. So if I was going through my book list for week one, I would highlight the books that I already have on my bookshelf. And then I would highlight books that I would like to purchase for the week that I don't already own. And I would do that in a different color just so I'm made aware as I'm looking through my materials what I need to get. Now for the student sheets. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I have mine stored and how I present them to my children. And then I'll go through and show you some other options based off what you might have around your house too. My suggestion to printing these student sheets is to print on cardstock paper and make sure you're printing in color, especially for the artwork that they'll observe each week. This is a morning style menu that we use in our homeschool, so I already have these um, stocked up in my house. I have the printed student cover on the front, and then I have some of our morning menu pages inside, also from Treehouse Schoolhouse, and then the student sheets from a connected Christmas in here. I have our scripture printed out, which you might choose to display this around your home as well, and then the copy work for the scripture. This is specifically why I do recommend having those multiple copies printed per child. You might wish to have them right on here with pencil. We prefer to have it in our morning menu so they can use a dry erase marker and we can reuse them year over year. And I like to have these two next to each other in the morning menu so they can look back and forth and it's the same. Next I have the song lyrics for Mary Did You Know in here as well as the artwork for week one. And then on the last page, I have the poem that the children will learn and memorize during that week. As you can see, I only have one week's worth of printouts in this menu, and that's because I don't want my children to get too far ahead of themselves. So at the end of each week, I would go through, take this out, put week twos in here, and then they can utilize that. I highly recommend these menu folders, but if you don't have them around your home, I'm going to show you how a binder and folder work just as well. So here I have just a small three ring binder. I have the cover on the front cover. And then inside I put page protectors. Like I'd mentioned before, we like to use this year over year. So if you're worried about the longevity of your paper, 
definitely print on cardstock and use these page protectors. A standard folder is another wonderful option to organize your materials. You might wish to get a standard pocket folder and put the pages in the pocket, or if you happen to have one of those three ring folders, you can utilize those page protectors again. Lastly, if you're expecting to use this resource year over year, I highly recommend one of these expandable folders where you can separate all of your resources by week. In my school room, I have a bookshelf that I use to utilize all of our homeschool resources. However, I don't actually keep our Christmas books lodged on our bookshelf. And that's because I like to display them in different areas of our home. This year, I actually have them in a basket. So all of the Christmas books that I own are in this basket. And during our Advent study, I can pull it out, put it in the living room, or I can pick and choose which books that I wouldn't pull out to display on our table for the day's lessons. Your children will be really excited to read these books, especially if you make it fun for them by displaying them in different areas of the house. Keeping a basket of books in your living room for snuggle time or after dinner reading is a wonderful idea. You might wish to put a few on your little bedside table or display them on shelves in different areas of your home. Now for the fun part, all of the crafts. A Connected Christmas has so many wonderful activities using a lot of resources you probably already have in your home. I'm going to show you how you can gather them around your house and how I personally store mine. There's not a lot that you should have to buy. Most of these items you probably have on hand already, especially if you homeschool. Things like yarn and clay. But if you do utilize that material list and find that you have to pick up some things, I'm going to show you how you can store them for the season. I love these totes. I get them at Target. And I go through my craft supplies and I gather what I already have. So I've had string, some cinnamon sticks, clay, and little pom-poms for a few of the handcrafts in here. And what I'll do is I'll go through the rest of my supply closet, see what else I have, and I'll add it to this box. Now for next year, I think that I'll keep everything stored in this box just for Connected Christmas, including the curriculum. So as I'm using it again, I can just pull it right on out. You might wish to gather these items week by week as you're running errands out around town, but I highly recommend putting them all in one place so you have easy access to them when you're going through for your lessons. I recommend going through that list of materials needed in its entirety before you start planning week by week out. That way you're able to budget for some things too. And then week by week, make sure you do it ahead of time, especially for those recipe items. Go through and highlight anything that you'll need to pull out from your pantry. Things like cinnamon or applesauce, peanut butter or cloves. You might want to keep those separate from your standard baking items or things that you know your family will eat for the week. That way you have it set aside for the crafts. You might wish to keep a basket on your kitchen table and your learning space that holds all of the learning resources that I discussed today. Your prepared student sheets, whether they're in a binder, a morning menu, or a folder. Your parent guide that you've had printed and a family Bible that you'll be utilizing through for a few of the lessons. You might wish to also put a few of the craft materials that you'll need for specific lessons in here as well. And keeping a basket is just easy to tote around throughout the house if you move from place to place. I hope this video is helpful to you as you prepare your Connected Christmas Family Advent Study.